When the eye tracker has been mounted, installed, and configured, it's time to install Toby Studio Live. Toby Studio Live is delivered separately on a DVD. Make sure you are logged into the computer as an administrator before starting the installation process. Insert the Toby Studio Live DVD. When the Toby Studio DVD has been detected by the system, click on the file named Toby Studio Installer. This will launch the installation process. The installation process does not require much interaction, more than accepting the license agreement, selecting where on the hard drive the software should be installed, and which users will have access to the software once the installation has been completed. It will also create a folder on the Start menu. The installation includes a few other steps done automatically by the installation software. When a secondary screen is connected, the same desktop image is commonly shown on both screens. To be able to use the Live Viewer, Windows needs to be set to extend the desktop to both screens. This is done by right-clicking on the desktop, selecting Screen Resolution, then selecting the option Extend These Desktops in the Multiple Displays drop-down list, and then clicking Apply. Finally, select Keep Changes to confirm the selection. If wanting to change on which screens the Start menu appears, click on the screen you want it to appear on and tick Make This My Main Display. Once having finished with the setup, click OK to confirm and close the window. The Toby Studio Remote Viewer allows the live viewing session to be followed on another computer connected to the same network as the computer running Toby Studio Live. Ideally, this should be a network only consisting of these two computers. Before you install the Toby Studio Remote Viewer software on the computer used for remote viewing of the live viewing session, connect the USB to Ethernet adapter to the Toby Studio Live computer. Insert the installation DVD for the adapter and run through the installation process. Once the USB to Ethernet adapter has been installed, set up the network between the two computers using either a switch or single long network cable. Then insert the Toby Studio DVD into the computer used for remote live viewing and double click in the file named Toby Studio Remote Viewer to install the software. Once the installation has been completed, click Finish to close the installation program. To verify that the mounting and configuration of the eye tracker, as well as the setup of the lab is working, it is useful to use the track status and calibration functions in Toby Studio. To be able to do this, you need to start up the software. The first time you start Toby Studio Live, you will be asked to enter the license key. Enter the Toby Studio Live license key and the name of your organization in the appropriate fields and click Activate Now. Next, you will see the Project Manager. It is generally good practice to create a new project for every new study you are running, as this will organize the collected data according to study and making it easier to analyze it. To proceed in opening the software, create a new project, give it a name, select where to store it, and then click Next. Then select a name from the first test or timeline in your project and click Create. In Toby Studio, you have access to two stimuli options. The first option is to record the screen with the screen recording element. You should use this option when testing web pages or software. The second option is to use a camera connected to the computer to film a physical object, such as a mobile phone or a tablet. This is done by using the scene camera element and is not covered in this introduction video. To select a recording option, Click on it and drag it down in the workspace below. When the dialog opens, start by giving the element a name. If you want to program the startup when the recording starts, such as a web browser, locate the program on your local drive using the Browse button. If you want to start up something manually or have it running in the background before the recording starts, leave this field empty. Click OK to confirm your selections. The next step is to identify and select the screen the eye tracker is attached to before proceeding. 
Thereafter, you need to select the eye tracker you want to use from the eye tracker browser. You open the eye tracker browser by clicking the text below the Start Recording button. If you only have one eye tracker, that will be the only eye tracker shown in the eye tracker browser list. To start the function that lets the moderator see the eye movements in real time during the study, click on the Setup button, select Live Viewing, and drag the window over to the screen which is not used for recording. The eye movements of the person sitting in front of the eye tracker will then be shown to the moderator watching the other screen. It is also useful to open the track status window and place it on the moderator's screen as a moderator then can ensure the participant stays within the trackable area in front of the eye tracker. In order to be able to use remote viewing to see the participant's eye movements in a viewing room, the remote viewing computer must first be connected to the computer running Toby Studio Live. To do this, begin by switching the slider in the bottom right corner of the Design and Record tab in Toby Studio Live to On and make note of the computer name given below. Next, you need to start up the Toby Studio Remote Viewer application on the remote viewing computer. When the software is up and running, Enter the IP address or the computer name of the computer running Toby Studio Live. The computer name is the name found under the switch activating remote viewing in the Toby Studio Live application. After entering the IP address or computer name, click on the Connect button. This should start up the connection and provide a live feed from the Toby Studio Live computer. Before doing a recording, every participant must be calibrated. The calibration is an integrated part of the recording process. Click on the Start Record button in Toby Studio to initiate the recording. You then have to create a participant by giving it a name or accepting the suggested name and click Continue. The track status window should then become visible. If the eyes in the track status are flickering, Try to see if any light sources, such as sunny windows or halogen spotlights, are interfering with the eye tracker. Sunlight and strong halogen spotlights might make it harder for the eye tracker to work properly, and it is recommended to avoid these in the room used for testing. If you have a participant wearing glasses, make sure the glasses are not scratched or dirty, as that also can interfere with the eye tracking. To proceed with the calibration, click the Start button. Ask the participant to follow the red dot carefully during the calibration to ensure accurate data. The green lines in the calibration feedback tell you how accurately the eye tracker is able to track the participant. Long lines mean less accuracy. To recalibrate one or more points, click on them in the calibration feedback and then on the recalibrate button. Once you are happy with the calibration, Click Continue to make a recording. The software will now record everything that happens on the screen, including mouse clicks and key presses, as well as the eye movements of the person sitting in front of the eye tracker. Click F10 or Escape to end the recording. To review the recording, click on the Replay tab. Select the recording in the recording list and click on the Play button. In the Replay tab, you can manually log events or review automatically logged events such as mouse clicks or key presses. You can also export complete recordings or short clips from recording as AVI video files. If you want to export a video clip from the recording, you need to first create a segment to export. To do this, place the handles on the progress bar where you want the segment to start and end. Then right-click on the now highlighted section between the handles and select Create a Segment. The segment is created and shown below the timeline. You can now right-click on the segment and select Export Segment as Video. You can also click on the Export Movie and do the export from there. In the Export Movie dialog, you can choose to do one or multiple exports of recorded segments or entire recordings. You are now ready to start using Toby Studio Live in your studies. The aim of most usability tests is to capture as natural behavior as possible. Ideally, you want to capture the behavior in a real usage situation, 
but in most cases, this is impossible. However, this ideal needs to be kept in mind for all parts of designing a usability study. When doing a study in a lab, it is an artificial situation for the participant, but there are things to consider in order for the setup not to interfere with the test results too much. First of all, seat the moderator out of sight from the participant. Otherwise, sudden movements might draw the participant's attention away from the screen. Make the tasks relevant to the participants. If they can identify themselves with the task, their behavior will be more natural than if they're simply told what to do. So instead of saying straight out what they should do, the task should provide some kind of context that feels relevant and makes the task into something they would do on their own outside of the test situation. Also keep in mind that the order of the task matters. If they've seen the interface before, they're more likely to remember where to find the parts of it that allows them to solve the current task. When the study has been designed and the lab set up, you can really experience the benefits of using live viewing. As a moderator can see what the participant sees, he or she can formulate and time questions about the interface based on what the participant has or hasn't seen already. Eye tracking data also provides much more context to a behavior than what is available without it. This is especially important if the participant is not very good at verbalizing his or her behavior in a concurrent think aloud study or to describing it in a follow up interview. Having the people involved in the design and development of the interface present during testing, seeing the gaze of the participant on the interface being evaluated, generally makes them more engaged in the entire testing process. By having debriefings regularly during testing, they become involved in the process of analyzing the participant's behavior. This leads to a shared understanding of issues with the interface, which many times makes a written report unnecessary the development process quicker. If the people involved in the development process cannot participate during testing, using video clips with gaze data to illustrate the findings generally is an efficient way of communicating the results. Conclusion. Adding live viewing and an eye tracker to a user study doesn't have to mean altering the methodology significantly. With only small changes, you can do interviews and studies that produce better well-grounded insights interferes less with the normal behavior of the participant, provides more engaged participant in the interface development process, and allows for more convincing presentations of the results.